1.5% has been described, but a percentage that is respectable, good, and big enough, and bigger than the average we have seen in the world. I see a country, very different when you look at the debt to GDP, GDP ratio, when you were talking about economic governance, the debt to GDP ratio was 19%. Today, after the rebasing, it's 11%. The average in Europe is 18.4%, Lord Brown. The average, when you look at the United States, is more than that. So when you look at that, that is responsible fiscal management. For you to have strong law, it's one of the lowest. I wish I had my chart here. I didn't know I was going to speak. You will say it's one of the lowest in the world. That is why investors are coming to Nigeria. Strong macroeconomic environment. Anywhere in the world today, Investors need four things to make money. They need the capital, they need the technology, the know-how, they need the raw materials, and they need the market. The first two, you can move anywhere in the world. You can move capital. You can move know-how anywhere in the world. Raw materials and market, you cannot move anywhere. Those are the two things that Nigeria and Baester State have in abundance. That is why investors are coming to this country. I talk about a country that has about 84 million hectares of land where almost everything can grow. We can produce rice, sugar cane all over the country, at least in 26 states of the Federation, including Baeza. We can go from sugar cane to sugar in at least 22 states of the Federation, including Baeza. So it is here. This, I'm, talk, I'm talking about a country that is the seventh largest producer of crude oil, has the eighth largest reserve of gas in the world, a country that has about 44 solid minerals in commercial quantity. How many countries in the world can boast of that? Very few. That is why investors are coming to Nigeria. When you talk about the market today, we talk of a country that has about 170 million people, growing at 3% per annum. A country that will be the third largest nation in the world by 2070 after India and China. A country that has one of the fastest growing middle class, with more than 25% of our population is that fast growing middle class. In the world, the top 10 youngest nations in the world in the next five to 10, uh, five, five to ten years a lot, many of them will be from African countries and Nigeria will be number one on that. When you compare that to Europe today, average age is more than 45 years. Compare that to China today. China has an aging population. Therefore, what does the world want? It wants a market. Yes, we need to increase the income per capita. We're working on that already. But every country wants to be in Nigeria. That is why Europe today wants to sign IPA with ECOWAS because they want the African market. That is why in the last 15 to 20 months, I said within five weeks, that is why we have received unprecedented interest from different countries. After the, after the, uh, um, the, the World Economic Forum, we received Pakistan president with more than 68 uh, uh, businessmen and women. The first time a president of Pakistan will visit Nigeria. Within that five weeks period, we received the, the minister in charge of economy from Switzerland with about 30 businessmen and women from Switzerland. What was unique about that was she told us that every year in the businessmen have about four or five locations they want to go to. This year, in spite of what you're hearing, they chose Nigeria and they came to Nigeria. Within that five weeks period, we have had the economic minister from Germany visit Nigeria with about 23 businessmen and women. We have had the economic minister from Netherlands visit Nigeria with about 30 entrepreneurs. And together, they're launching a fund where you can even access and invest in countries like Nigeria. Within that five weeks period, we have had the minister of commerce, or the, sorry, the secretary of commerce from United States, Penny Prisca, visit Nigeria with about 23 businessmen in the power sector. What she saw and heard, she was excited about the country. That is the new Nigeria this government is building, has been building since 2010. 
It's a different country. And that is what we must embrace. Those are the reasons why they're here. So when we go, to, when we talk about Baeza today, Baeza, yes, 1.9 million people. But Baeza today accounts for more than 30% of the crude oil production of this country, which means it can go from crude oil to refineries and all that. The opportunities there are huge. It accounts for about 53% of the gas that NLNG uses, the Fisto, which means that it can go from gas to petrochemicals to uh, methanol and to fertilizer and also to plastic and other, other sectors. Singapore has no gas, has no oil. Singapore has one of the biggest petrochemical sector in the world today. Baeza has oil, it has gas, it can do better than Singapore. When you talk about agriculture, we talk about palm oil. Indonesia and Malaysia rely on palm oil. Baeza can do more. You, have, you talk about sugar cane. You can move from sugar cane to sugar. Today we import 97% of our sugar. From, the, move from sugar cane to sugar, from your raw material, from your waste of producing sugar from sugar cane, you produce power, you produce ethanol, you produce animal feed from the waste of producing sugar. That is sort of wealth that said can tap into and it can make said a very different state. When you look at, go to Saudi Arabia, from the gas they are flaring, a company called Sabic was set up to use, to turn gas into all industrial products. Visit there, you see all types of industrial products produced by Sabic. Sabic is in the 52 different countries in the world, generates more than $50 billion for the government. That is what Baisa State can do, and it can do more than that as well. The opportunities are huge in this country. The opportunities are 